Coming up on Ag Week TV, President Trump makes his first speech on farm policy. We'll have an exclusive interview with him about it. A young rancher makes his way back home to North Dakota after seeing the world. It's the official kickoff of the farm show season. We'll find out what farmers are talking about here at the Dakota Farm Show. Hello, welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Rose Dunn in for Shauna Olson. President Trump is the first president to address the American Farm Bureau's annual convention in 25 years. It was held this week in Nashville. Sarah Wyant from AgriPulse, one of the most respected names in ag journalism, had the rare opportunity to interview the president one-on-one. -on -one. She started by asking him if he plans to withdraw from NAFTA. Well, I'm negotiating tough for the farmers. I mean, if you think I'm doing it not for myself, I'm doing it because the farmers have not been treated well. Look at your prices over the last four years. It's, mm -hmm. you know, they go down. Uh, Mexico's made $71 billion a year in trade deficits with us. Canada's $17 billion. That's a lot. So we're negotiating with Mexico and Canada right now on NAFTA. And hopefully we can negotiate something that's going to be great for the farmer. And we have other things to do. We're working very hard on broadband. But we are negotiating with NAFTA trying to make a much better deal for the farmer. Well, we know you are still in the middle of that negotiation. Oh, yes. And your yes. team is doing a fantastic job. But are we prepared with a plan B in case that part of the market, the 19, 20, almost 30 percent for some commodities that's exported. How would we compensate farmers in the loss? Well, remember that it can't get too much worse than when I took over, because when I took over, you know, you look at the steep decline in prices, and that shouldn't be happening to our farmers, because these are great people. These are, are great people. And we're trying to make it so the farmer can do better, and at the same time make it somewhat fair for our country, because our country is losing so much. As I say, 71 billion with Mexico, we, we have a deficit which is hard to believe. People don't even understand that kind of a number. Right. But no, I think it's going to come out very well for the farmers. That's what I'm doing. Great. One more trade question, and that is that there was an expectation that perhaps there would be some bilateral trade deals, especially with Japan, which is such a huge market yeah. for our farmers and right. ranchers. What's, uh, what kind of uh, uh, summary would you give our, our audience here about what's happening in terms of bilaterals, especially with Japan? Well, Sarah, we're uh, actually doing that. We've already started with Japan. With China, we've opened it up to beef. You probably know all mm -hmm. about that. And we're going to have that with Japan, and we're going to have that with many other places. And you're starting to see the results, but one of the results one of the early results is, is really China with the beef. Okay. A couple of farm bill questions Go for ahead. you. Uh, Sen Senator Roberts from Kansas right. has already man. shared his deep love of crop insurance right. and the importance of the safety net for farmers. Your first budget proposed about $30 billion in, in cuts right. uh, for crop insurance. Will we be expecting more of the same in your next budget, or how should farmers view you? Yeah, we, we're going to. I'm in favor of the crop insurance, which is the big question. And uh, Senator Roberts is terrific. Pat has been uh, pushing very hard for it, and I agree with it. So we're going for crop insurance. On immigration, as you know, farmers are having a tough time, both in the fields and in the barns, getting uh, a a legal workforce right. in order to uh, harvest their crops and the livestock. So what actions do you plan to take that can actually help ease that pain and make sure that there's a reliable workforce for So we're going to be very, very tough at the border, as you know. We have to be. But when you have people that come in that have been work, working in Tennessee, working for farms, whether it's Tennessee or any place else, but working on the farms for many, many years, and all of a sudden the border slows, that's not going to happen. We're letting those people come through. They're going to come through from uh, a standpoint of being documented properly, properly documented. But we are very cognizant of the fact that we're not going to be taking your workers away. Great. Well, thank you so much thank for the you. opportunity. Thank you very much. Is there thank any you. one thing that you think would be most important for farmers to take home from your speech? I think just keep your optimism up. We're really working hard for the farmer. If you, uh, again, look at the rules and regulations, you look at what we've done, it's, uh, people are so happy. And farmers have contacted us. I have many farmers coming to the White House. They can't believe whether it's the Water Act, whether it's uh, so many other things, whether it's the estate tax. We have you very much in mind. We're going to make it better. We'd like to see those prices go up so that you can do a little bit better, because they've really been moving down rapidly over the last four years. The president says he'll be back for next year's convention as they reach a milestone of 100 years. 
The 35th annual Dakota Farm Show officially kicked off the 2018 farm show season in the region. Nearly 300 exhibitors were showing off new technology, services or management strategies designed to help farmers with their tight margins. But as Michelle Rook reports, farmers were also looking at ways to leave the land better for the next generation. Here at this year's Dakota Farm Show in Vermilion, farmers are once again talking about improving their return on investment with low commodity prices, but the focus is also on how they can be better environmental stewards. Exhibitors were busy working with farmers on 2018 management strategies to improve margins. There's a lot of uh, real technological discussions going on here, and it's all focused on, you know, how do we how do we re reduce costs or be more efficient or or drive drive yields. And agronomic discussions included plans for more beans since they're more profitable than corn. We're obviously going to see some beans on beans until this uh, corn market rallies a little bit. But there again, I'm going to caution anybody on doing that until it's time to plant. Plus seminar topics like water quality help farmers be better stewards of the land. There's been a, a big push um, for things like cover crops, which are able to capture some of those nutrients. There's been a lot of no-till implemented. Also on display was new technology like remote irrigation monitoring to decrease water use, which is more environmental. Instead of like the standard practice, I'm going to put in, say, an inch across every acre of that field. You can vary that throughout the field based on your soil types and terrain. In Vermilion, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll meet a young rancher who's seen the world and is settling in back home. Superior Grain Equipment offers storage and drying solutions designed for your grain handling needs. Mixed flow grain dryers from Superior offer even heating to reduce heat stress cracking so you get higher quality grain, higher test weights, and better prices. Plus, they use half the energy of conventional screen dryers. Experience cost savings and Superior Grain Conditioning. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Make every minute of the growing season count. Schedule your equipment for a genuine Case IH parts and service uptime inspection at Titan Machinery. Our professional service technicians have the training and experience to pinpoint and repair problems before they have a chance to shut you down during the season. Avoid the high cost of in-season downtime. Give yourself the peace of mind knowing your equipment is ready to work. Schedule your equipment today by going to uptime18.com or calling your local Titan Machinery dealer. That's Titan Machinery, providing you with genuine Case IH parts and service. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo. This one-day-only event features speaker Jay Lair and is hosted by Market to Market's Mike Pearson. With a large corn and soybean trade show and breakout education and networking sessions, you can't miss the first annual Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, uh, more people can eat. It's common for young people to leave the farm seeking greener pastures, but sometimes they find their way back. Jonathan Knutson met a young man who's returned to his family's ranch after a few years of seeing the world. You're about to meet David Lundy, a thoughtful, intelligent young man who saw a little of the world and then returned home. As I looked about what I value in my life, I thought about my family and the farm and the chance to come back and work alongside my dad. David went to college in Colorado, then studied and worked in France and Africa. But in the fall of 2016, he felt the pull of home. 
This farm has been in the Lundy family for five generations. It's an 80 head cow calf operation. Besides being closer to family, David values rural life. Take turns, take turns, <laughs> be polite. As I looked at the farm and ranch, uh, it offered a chance to, to work outside, to see work in kind of the rhythms and seasons of life and work. The farm has always been a very special place in my family's history. Nathan, David's dad, said he was humbled and grateful when his son decided to come home. It was something he always hoped for, but didn't want to push for. It was gratifying to realize that the relationship we had developed through ranching together at a young age, that it was a positive experience for him and that, that we work well together. And so that was, it was very gratifying and realized that the benefit that I have had from working off the land is something that, that has value to him as well. And I'm very aware of my place as the fifth generation of Lundy that has been here and so the chance to follow in my previous generation's footsteps was very meaningful and so when I thought about what do I want to devote my life to and where put my energy, the farm was the place to be. David is carefully and patiently sorting through his options, but he's confident that both cattle and Cooperstown are part of his future. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. To generate extra income, David also works part-time as a substitute teacher, is the Griggs County Tax Equalization Director, and writes articles for the Steele County Press. For much more on this story, check out John's article in the next Ag Week magazine. Countless loads of livestock travel through the region, and sometimes trucks hauling them are involved in crashes. That creates some unique problems for first responders. They may need special equipment or specialized help like veterinarians. It gets even more complicated if it's cold or dark. Lisa Peterson, an NDSU Extension Beef Specialist, says training for this is beneficial to both people and animals. We have to realize that these are not low stress events. You've taken animals probably going 60 or 70 miles an hour, brought them to a quick stop and turned their lives upside down in most cases. And so we work with um, responders to understand cattle handling and how they see and how they behave in these instances so that we can better handle animals, but especially keep our first responders safe. That there's a pretty fair chance it's going to happen in your area. And I don't think that chance is going to get less. It's probably going to get more so as time goes on. And when it comes and you aren't prepared for it, it's, you're in for quite a shock. This training was one of several being held in 14 states. The Bovine Response Plan is funded by Beef Checkoff Funds, the USDA, and several universities. We may not like it much, but cold January weather is actually healthier for cattle than warmer weather. Bill Lyons and his brother Mike are partners in a grain and feedlot cattle farm. The Lyons feedlot holds up to 700 head, but they currently have about 500. They say when the weather dips to about 10 below, it slows up the bugs that can hit cattle, especially pneumonia. Lyons says the first part of the winter wasn't ideal. A little too warm. Too warm and damp and tough on calves, little pneumonia. This is the weather we were waiting for. Cold is good. In addition to cattle, the lions raise soybeans, wheat, and corn. Although the 2017 growing season was dry, they say they had exceptional yields. Well, at least the cattle are enjoying the cold weather. Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, we'll show you how the Budweiser plant in Moorhead turns barley into malt for beer. The KMOT Ag Expo takes place January 24th through the 26th at the North Dakota State Fair Center in Minot. Ag Week is proud to be part of this outstanding agricultural showcase. From exhibits to informational seminars and so much more, you'll find it all. Be sure to visit the Ag Week booth in the North Concourse. Log on to KMOTAgExpo.com for more information. Ag Week welcomes you to the KMOT Ag Expo January 24th through the 26th in Minot. American Farm Equipment offers you the most effective, reliable, and simple to run grain dryers. Deluxe grain dryers with Moisture Link Plus G2 control panels give you the most accurate moisture and temperature readings, making it easy for you. You can monitor remotely with your cell phone, iPad, or computer. Guy Kittleson with American Farm Equipment installs deluxe grain dryers, and if needed, Guy can access your grain dryer remotely, saving you time and money. Call Guy Kittleson at American Farm Equipment today. Dream of building a new home, garage, shop, barn, or commercial space? What if you could create your ideal building for less than you ever imagined? 
Want to build a cabin in the woods, a workshop, storage space? Then call your Hanson personal building designer now and we'll include professionally engineered sealed plans to your new building absolutely free. Save up to thousands of dollars. Build your ideal dream for less than you ever imagined. Call now. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, now I have them done, up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Weather portion of Ag Week now. The thawing conditions from early in the week, obviously long gone from the northern plains. Question is, will they come back or will we stuck with the cold again for the rest of the month? We'll talk about that. We finally have more widespread snow cover this winter. It's been a slow time coming, but a lot of the Great Plains, upper Midwest has now substantial snow on the ground. And Arctic air will be somewhat in retreat. We'll let you know if it's actually going to move out completely. Jet stream still coming out of the north for the moment. Obviously this, obviously this weekend we are frigid in much of the northern plains and the Great Lakes states, just like it was last week. But we still have this large ridge of high pressure in the jet stream, which will allow for some changes this week. In fact, I expect some Great Plains moderation by the middle of the week as the cold weather shifts on to the east. And then we're going to get a much weaker kind of a split flow pattern later on in the week, which will likely keep the really cold air bottled up. There may be a brief intrusion of colder weather again this weekend, but the really cold stuff will stay northerly, and I don't think it'll stick around very long. By early next week, I do expect the ridging to begin building back. We'll get some cold weather in the northern Rockies. The Great Plains won't be that bad. Kind of in and out, probably a lot of frontal activity. Canada is going to be really cold, but a lot of the United States will not be as cold as it was over Christmas in the new year. Now, precipitation, little light snow moving out of the Great Plains this weekend. That will likely end up being lake effect into the Great Lakes area by the end of the weekend, and that'll eventually move on out to sea. Might kick up an east coast, east coast storm. We'll have to see. That's not certain. Middle of the week, there'll be some precip coming into the northern Rockies. Some of that's, a lot of that's going to be snow, especially in the higher elevations. And later in the week, a rain system will stall down in Texas, move north. North, may get a quick shot of light snow through the Great Plains and by the weekend looks like a good chance for some rain mixed with snow some of that ice over the northeastern states but with the flatter resolution of the jet stream by a week from now we're actually going to be looking I think at somewhat milder generally drier weather there will likely be another round of snow in the Rockies and some rain coming into the Pacific Northwest but overall looking for less precipitation in the Great Plains meanwhile down south Starting to look at some pretty significant showers and thunderstorms over the southern part of Brazil and down into uh, the northern reaches of Argentina. But once you get down into central and southern Argentina, it's a very dry weather pattern. And you probably heard about the record heat in southeast uh, Australia last week. It's still very hot and dry there. Tropical cyclone Joyce will be bringing some much needed rain to parts of western Australia. Thunderstorms in the north, but most of Australia will will remain very much hot and dry. For our region, still pretty cold with snow on the ground, but there is signs that the severe Arctic weather may be moving in retreat. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. 
This is Dennis Beliski reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Field Drainage, Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second-generation, family-owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage, Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage, Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Micro Essentials is a unique product in the sense where it's a homogenized product that has four nutrients in every single granule. It makes it different than other products that are out in the country. So it has four different nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, which is two forms of sulfur, and zinc in every granule. We're seeing multiple things. We have sulfate sulfur and elemental sulfur. The sulfate sulfur, we get the bulk of the use of it the first year. The elemental breaks down over time. I've had farmers come up to me and tell me that they not only see the benefit the first year in higher yield or higher quality, but they're seeing it in consecutive years. So it's a huge benefit for the grower to use it on a consecutive basis. Our overall goal is to increase our farmers' yields and help them produce a higher quality and higher yielding crop. It's giving them the opportunity to get more nutrients in one. It makes sense agronomically, it makes sense economically. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. Do you ever wonder how barley gets turned into beer? Shauna Olson went inside the Anheuser-Busch malting plant in Moorhead to see how barley is transformed into malt, which makes beer. This brand is the iconic one that has to be right and is the standard. It's so challenging to make, to make sure that you have a great bud in Beijing, China, or Fargo, North Dakota, or somewhere around Champaign, Illinois. It takes about 30 days for barley to be turned into Budweiser beer. The process starts here at the Anheuser-Busch malting plant in Moorhead. It sits on eight acres and is almost 40 years old. The plant turns barley into malt and has a capacity of 8 million bushels. The first step is the steeping process. This is our steep house. The main objective in the steeping process is we want to take that barley kernel and we want to get it hydrated. We want to get it up to 43% moisture. This also cleans the kernels. The most crucial thing we need to do in here is keep the barley alive. It goes into the immersion phase. It's then drained and the barley rests, then filled with water again. The steeping process takes about 25 to 35 hours depending on the variety. Next, it's on to germination. This process takes between 60 and 90 hours. This is where we've taken that wet 45% moisture barley and we brought it in here and we put it in this bed. In this bed is where we get to play a farmer, play mother nature, and get the grain to grow. The kernel grows and undergoes biochemical changes. We're breaking down the cell wall, we're breaking down the protein matrix, making it soluble, and we're creating enzymes that are going to convert the starch to sugars in the brewing process. Then it's onto the kiln, which is about 190 degrees, too hot to enter, but looks similar to this. It's where the growing process is halted. It takes about six to eight days for barley to become malt. The malt is then shipped to 12 breweries in the U.S. The Moorhead plant is unique because it can produce two and six row malting barley. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a South Dakota company is improving cattle genetics around the world. Mosaic, bringing you Micro Essentials, the next generation of fertilizer, is proud sponsor of the day Wednesday, January 24th at the KMOT Ag Expo in Minot. Stop by the State Fair Center and experience all that the Ag Expo has to offer. Mosaic brings you Micro Essentials, a fertilizer designed to meet the needs of today's advanced farming technologies. Mosaic, 
helping the world grow the food it needs. And proud sponsor of the day Wednesday, January 24th at the KMOT Ag Expo at the North Dakota State Fair Center in Minot. Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. Fifty years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech Electric System from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech System in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. We're excited to bring you the new AgWeek app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your AgWeek news, weather, and the latest episodes of AgWeek TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take AgWeek with you. Download the new AgWeek app today. For seed stock producers, quality semen is the foundation of any breeding program. And it's no secret beef producers in South Dakota have some of the best genetics in the country. So it only makes sense to have a way to collect and preserve the genetics through custom semen collection. As Michelle Rook tells us, that's the idea that spawned custom genetic solutions of Mitchell. Custom Genetic Solutions is open for business. The new semen processing site is one of the few certified semen service facilities in the region. It's just a good location and uh, you know the, the closest CSS facility from here you either got to go to Billings, Montana or western Nebraska or southern Nebraska or Des Moines, Iowa. They also help seed stock producers add value to their breeding programs. Our customers are going to be marketing semen to their customers, both domestically and we are CSS certified, and so we can uh, produce and ship semen eligible for export. And they're using state-of-the-art technology to test the quality of semen and improve fertility rates. You know, looking at acrosome integrity, uh, mitochondria, DNA. Dear Mitchell, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Custom Genetic Solutions hopes to collect and process 250,000 units of semen in the first year. They can house up to 90 bulls at the stud site and are currently accepting sires ahead of their peak season this spring. Thanks for watching this edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.